Good morning, it's Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Song of the Wailing Wall, and our scripture is Psalm, the 80th chapter. Revive us so we can call on your name once more. Turn us again to yourself, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. In the last two months, there have been many prayers offered to accompany the grief and agony of loss in both Israel and Palestine. It's the prayer heard from those who are in the path of destruction. It's the song of the wailing wall. The October 7th attack by Hamas in Jerusalem and surrounding communities and Israel's counterattack on Gaza is the latest in the conflict between Arabs and Jews stemming back to the womb of Rebekah where there was a battle going on between her unborn sons Esau and Jacob. Esau was born first with Jacob hot on his heels, literally grabbing his brother's ankle. Esau's descendants are the Arab nations, while the Jews trace their lineage back to Jacob. Their conflict has been the focus of heartache and struggle for dominance. The modern-day location of this quarrel's violence is the Gaza-Israel barrier, the land commonly called the Gaza Strip, which separates the western bank of the Mediterranean Sea from southernmost Israel. The rights to this land has been in dispute for many years, but is originally documented as part of God's promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verses 18 through 31. As it is with any war, it's hard to be precise about who's right and who's wrong. Generally, the motives that trigger wars are muddy, messy, and inevitably dark. In the end, it's difficult to conclusively justify any war. God alone knows. 13th century venerated priest Thomas Aquinas said this, For a war to be just, three things are necessary. Public authority, or the people approving, just cause, and right motive. These are difficult issues. I'm not against doing the hard thinking about such things. It's in my nature to do so. A bigger problem is not being consumed by that process, or our own prejudice. I therefore usually default to what I believe is God's call for grim times, prayer. We pray for Jerusalem and for Esau's descendants. Now many people say you must take a side. Well, I do. I choose the side of all humanity in the same way God says he does. Love everyone and despise the real enemy, the destroyer, the purveyor of death, the lover of all that sin embraces. This stand does not come easily or without real consequences, and I attempt to keep from judging other people's stand, sometimes with success. Israel has had its share of wailing at the wall for the atrocities that they've suffered, and I weep with them in their loss and the pain they must endure. I also take the Palestinians to that weeping wall. They are also part of my tribe. That tribe is the oldest of earth, begun by a couple in a pristine garden called Eden. In following the events from afar, mostly media reports, I find I must work very hard to keep in mind the only quote-unquote winners in any war are those who can go forward without malice, deeply humble, and committed to putting an end to such madness. For you today, thinking about these things always makes me want to answer everybody's questions, and I can't do that because I'm not God. The second best thing I want to do is go home, pull the covers over my head, and not think about it. That also fails, merely closing the darkness on me as I hide from the truth. All I can offer is to tell us we must raise our hearts and voices in prayer. And in doing so, we will find answers when God desires to reveal them. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.